Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Exploring Operating Systems. Uh, can, can I talk any faster? I do not know. Last week we took a look at uh, another Linux distro <laughs> um, called Deep in Linux, which was a Chinese manufactured operating system. And it had some very interesting features on it, which kind of made it very consumer friendly for people who are just hopping on from the Windows ecosystem over to the Linux ecosystem, in my opinion. And um, there are other uh, distros out there which can do a similar job, but I do actually kind of think that when it comes to to uh, moving from li Windows to Linux, I do personally feel as though Deep in Linux is actually it does a better job than stuff like Zorn OS and all that sorts, which I've also showcased on this a uh, series as well. That being said, we are taking a look at Elementary OS, which I do believe. Um, other uh, YouTube YouTube channels who do this kind of stuff is also showcases this OS as well. But that was back in 2015, I think. I think not notable examples do include OS First Timer. But this operating system in, in particular has actually been updated since then. Updates available, 20 updates for available for your system. So this is Elementary OS. And uh, while Deep in Linux can have a combination of a Mac OS feel and a Windows feel, this mainly just has a Mac OS feel. And compared to Deep in Linux, this also has a top bar at the top as well. I'm not sure what you would call this, but um, so it's got the dock at the bottom with the pop out icons compared to the box in icons in Deep in Linux. I am kind of comparing the two in a little bit of a way, so if you haven't watched the episode, please take a look at that episode now to see what I mean. That being said, there's a notification area and you can see it's not do not disturb. That's the first thing you'll see about this so I'll probably also argue this operating system is also quite good for people who are transitioning over. Um, not too sure if this would actually work on a laptop because I don't I no longer own the laptop that I use for Deep in Linux that I tested that on but I can kind of see if it would that probably would. Um, so you've got the clock at the top um, and you've also got the, the time and day kind of thing going on and I'm not too sure what would happen if you highlight it. Oh, it shows a calendar. Fair enough. And it just kind of date stamp when I recorded this episode, but who cares? But, um, yes. So, here are some of the programs you get on this and there's not too many to be fair. Um, which I would probably argue is probably okay because there's less system resources, there's less stuff to worry about and all you have to do is add your own stuff that you want to add to it. So it's got an app center, which is kind of like the, the download center for various apps and games within the Linux ecosystem kind of thing. Uh, you've got a normal calculator, which just a basic calculator. Kind of looks like the Windows XP app calculator in a little bit of a way. Very simple. Um, I kind of like the kind of like gradient thing going on. It's kind of Mac OS-ish in its design. Um, but yeah, that's going for it. A calendar. Which I've already seen up here, but this is a bigger scale version in program form. You can actually, I do believe, I'll can't access this to deny. So I can type some stuff here. So I can a uh, write reminders, for instance. So I've got all the event going on, and um, so it's two. I can't seem to date stamp that, but ah, who cares? It the option is there for anyone who who is intrigued. The camera function. Will it see me? Can you see me? Hello? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's because I'm running another uh, program in the background which is using my camera. I'm not too sure if I'm going to show my face on, on this series yet, but we will get there eventually. Code, which is a programming application, which I've already added some free kink. What? I've also added some text too, because I'm just playing about with it. <laughs> um, what I like to do when I first start off a reviewing these uh, programs is I like to have a bit of fun with them myself behind the scenes before I actually record an episode. So that's what I was doing. So that's why there's already the stuff on here before I even got to it yet. Epiphany, which is a, a web browser. Kind of got Mozilla Firefox thing going on. Could be based on it, I'm not too sure, but hee-haw. Now, what you're seeing is actually me <laughs> trying to uh, find ways to download some contents to 
showcase how certain programs work on this OS. So yeah, it's very simple in its design. You've got the, the Chrome right here. This, this is what it's called, the uh, Chrome. It's quite nice looking. It's very, very simple in its design. You've got simple icons. You've got favourites. You've got a settings area. You've got the thing at the top so I can look for YouTube because that's my favourite. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I go to YouTube, please? It works. Somewhat, it's kind of being slow, but it's running on a virtual machine, so you can't really blame it too much. So that is a piff, 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 go away. And you notice how the little bar at the top changes from transparent to black when a window is open. Not too sure what happened to the the, the, the dock though. Um, so you've got that files, which is a very simple uh, <laughs> program for viewing documents kind of thing. Um, not too sure what this is based on. Maybe it could be based on Dolphin. I'm not too sure, but it could be its own unique program. But just like Deep in Linux, it's also got quick access points for different resources and stuff you can get. And uh, there's also a multitasking view, mail, which that exists, but I don't really want to use my email address. So multitasking view. There's a way to view multiple desktops, which I'm kind of confused by this feature. To me, I'd really prefer to use this if, if I was going to use multiple desktops, I'd actually get a second monitor, but the option is there, it's not really my cup of tea, I'd rather just keep it out of the, the, the operating system, keep everything uh, simple in that way, but hey, the, op the, the option is there if, if, you, if you want to use it. And uh, music. Just at Deep in Linux, a lot of the programs on here are built into the, the uh, OS itself, and this is an example of that thing going on. These are an example of two uh, songs I downloaded on this because beforehand this would have actually been empty with nothing on it. So I downloaded some stuff. So this is a song from Bain Sounds. So that is the pause, that is the play. Uh, rewind and fast forward, which I think is actually a uh, previous and next, I'm not too sure, but that exists. You can tell uh, the view of the songs. Never played this song before. Um, music. Which is kind of weird. That's kind of weird in its own way, but that, that's an option that's there. Um, yeah, so the, the mode of use, you've got a way to scroll through the song. You can um, shuffle the songs even, maximize the thing which makes it black again, minimize that. There's a settings option, import to library, preferences, what does the preferences do? Music, library management, data integration, close. There's also a video player, somewhere, <laughs> I'll look at that later. Photos. And these are some Royal of Free photos I downloaded. Um, I think they're Royal of Free, but this is from Google Images, of course. So, yeah, actually, I actually kind of like this. I'm going to say this is a desktop background. I think if that option exists, remove from library, remove it to rubbish. Um, I'm actually kind of sad now. I thought there was an option here to set this as a desktop background. It doesn't exist. It proved me wrong. Uh, go back to photos. There's another photo right here. Another nice one. Can I say it this? It moved to rubbish bin. Where is the rubbish bin on this thing? There's no way I believe to drag and drop the icons. Not, but it just makes them disappear. I wonder though. No, you can't put any icons on the desktop, which is kind of sad. Um, screenshot, which you can use to take a screenshot of the desktop. Oh God, that scared me. <laughs> that sound effect. Um, so you can take a re you can take a region or you can take a window screenshot there's no windows open but that ex it exists uh, so you've got the system settings we'll get to that in just a second we'll go to the videos player you have to browse with a file though open the file footage of sunset view sorry for the low quality uh, resolution kind of stuff um and the frames per second it is running the virtual machine so it's going to be running quite slow but there you go um, so let's go to settings. There's, there's a terminal there as well. It's, it's quite interesting how it's transparent as well. 
And let's go through the system of the settings. So you've got applications, and default applications, startup applications. Let's go back. Notification area. And that is a notification area. You can also set it to do not disturb, like I showed before. Um, security and privacy, which I think is for passwords and such. Display options, keyboard, and blah blah blah. What does the desktop option do again? So that's different um, options for this background. Let us see. Actually, let's cancel that and uh, let's see what that looks like. Uh, very mysterious, very crazy, very nuts. Oh, Japanese. Is that Chinese or Japanese? I'm not too sure. I love that text though. Nice ocean. I love these backgrounds as well. They're very beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. I do actually believe I forgot to showcase the screensavers in the previous episode. Um, it showcased Steep and Linux, of course, but that was just kind of a sad time. Um, appearance. Window animations, panel tra translucency, tongue tied. <laughs> Small text, default, large, bigger. If, if, yeah, they keep it, keep it de facto. Keep everything perfect. Has to be perfect. Dock. Icon size is tiny, medium, or large. Hide when focused. Window overlap to dock. Anything overlap. Blah blah blah. blah. Unhide that, so that's there all the time. Let's keep that fair size. Pressure reveal. What does that do? Oh. Hot corners. So multitasking view, show all windows, execute custom command, show applications menu. Oh, nope. I'm going to do that here instead. Show applications menu. So. Hopefully, if I go to the... Oh, it does it! Yay! How about from the bottom, just to make sure that I wasn't just pranking myself. Show a window, show applications menu. Let's go to this corner down here. There we go. It works. Let's go back to all settings now. And, uh... That's basically all of those options right there. So got display, got keyboard, mouse and keyboard, power. But I think that that option is mostly valid when it's running on a laptop kind of thing. Sound. Can I get sound please? Um, Bluetooth and all those basic features. So it's very basic in its uh, principle design. And uh, yeah, very easy and accessible. Which is probably what it's designed for. And it's got a, got a, a Nikki, Nikki media player. Nice. Melody. So, just like other Linux distros, this has got its own app store for downloading a lot of Linux applications. It's actually quite a good design thing to have because you've got everything in one place. You can actually just download it straight away, kind of thing. Office, and it's using a kind of Microsoft Office esque font type and color, which is kind of badger. We prefer raccoons in this den, but. Uh, Notifier. Notes up. So. So that is some of the basic stuff within elementary OS. Very basic in its design. And it also warns you when you need to update thingamajigs. Um, not an option there to access um, updates. So you have to go through the installed area though. And you just have to type in your uh, password. And then you can start installing an application or installing updates. It's very secure in that way. It's kind of weird though. <laughs> but options are there and they are welcome. So it's just, it's just going to do that. Let me just close this. I might do it in the background. Alright, so you've got the sound effect options and it also displays the song that you're initially playing, if I do believe. So if I continue playing a game, a song. and pause from the sound area right here. The power settings, which you can lock the uh, system, which shrinks the resolution down. Very zen bill. <laughs> let's, log, let, let's log us all back in. Oh. 
There we go. <laughs> but yeah, that that is actually a, I actually really love this rocket system. Not too much to talk about out of the box, but hey, that's probably just how simple it is. There's not too much interesting going on, but you can add whatever you like to it. And as I say, while the Deep in Linux episode, um, while that episode um, showcased Deep in Linux, I did say that when it came to came to it. Um, I would probably suggest that that was actually a better operating system when it came to transitioning over from a Linux desktop as well as a, a Mac OS desktop. Quite it's very simple in its principle. This is probably just exclusive to Mac OS users who want to transition over, but hey, Windows users can transition over. It's not exactly a difficult um, piece of software to grasp. Um, very, very simple, very elegant. It's very uh, resolution friendly. It's quite good for laptops. Um, I can see it from the from the <laughs> from this display display right here, but yeah, user friendly, pretty pretty friendly in its user experience kind of thing. So yeah, that is a um, <laughs> elementary OS. I just have to think there for some reason. I'm not too sure why. My brain is not working. But with that being said, I am Ricky. Thanks for watching Explore Open Systems. And with that being said, take care and stay safe during this thing going on <laughs> in the background and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.